And now it's uh, my pleasure to uh, present the first speaker, uh, Professor Nikolai Nikolaevich Smirnov from Moscow State University. So every plenary speaker has uh, 35 minutes, including questions, so please save some time for questions. So please try to um, finish in 30 minutes. Uh, okay, uh, dear colleagues, it's very nice uh, for me to see uh, you all present in this hall and present online. It's very nice to uh, meet my old friends and colleagues. Uh, please, I will ask the technical support uh, to place uh, my presentation on the screen. And I'm very thankful to the organizers for the provided opportunity to deliver this lecture. Uh, so this lecture, just the first part, the model, uh, I will tell briefly, because a year before we had an online conference, and so I explained there in details the local model of the uh, interaction of dispersed uh, just particle droplets with the um, high enthalpy flows and so yes this is uh, my presentation digital modeling of multi-scale combustion processes problems and solutions and so just the small scale problems were discussed during my previous <laughs> lecture and so now we will face uh, just the macroscopic results and problems uh, and uh, probable solutions um, just me uh, yes okay and so this um, just i will only comment uh, the <sighs> title page so here on the right hand side you can see the building of moscow state university which i am representing and on the left hand side the building of the the main building of the federal science center scientific research institute for system analysis which uh, our team also represents and so uh, this uh, presentation uh, is co-authored by uh, Veronika Terenkova, Valery Nikitin, and Lyubin Stamov, who is present here. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, so now, just the motivation for this study, most engines use dispersed fuel systems in combustion chambers. So here you can see just the classical, just the, the airplane where there are dispersed systems, uh, jet propulsion fuel with ga uh, li in the liquid phase with gas, uh, with um, air is in oxidant in gaseous phase. Here on the left you can see the um, engine, uh, um, rocket engine 146. Uh, and this engine is uh, has an inverse dispersed system uh, oxidant in the form of liquid oxygen is injected in the atmosphere of gaseous hydrogen because the boiling temperature of hydrogen is much lower than that of the oxygen and so also um, the motivation uh, for this study are different problems of uh, safety in uh, just fuel storage or fire extinguishing because uh, in most of extinguishers in the process of extinguishing we usually have also dispersed mixture just water droplets or droplets of some active reagent uh, aimed at suppressing the fire so the outline first uh, there will be theoretical 
and experimental results on shockwave initiation of detonation in dispersed fuel air mixtures. Then uh, we'll discuss convective combustion and deflagration to detonation transition in polydispersed fuel air mixtures, which means when we have all the spectrum of droplets of different sizes. And the effect of polydispersed character. And um, the effect of fully dispersed character, <laughs> or it works again, thank you, uh, on the, uh, and in, uh, in homogeneity of the mixture on the onset of detonation. And uh, besides, uh, we'll discuss some problems of digital modeling or numerical simulation and acceleration options. Uh, optional acceleration of computations. So uh, we'll use macroscopical kinetic modeling of two-phase mixtures, which incorporates equations for multi-component reacting uh, compressible viscous flows, three equation turbulence model, initial and boundary conditions, Particulate phase modeling accounting for non-equilibrium operation and atomization. All these aspects uh, we discussed during my previous lecture. That's why now I'll show just briefly the model very briefly. So the governing equation for toppling uh, reactive flow compressible uh, just the turbulence model, three equation model for turbulence kinetic energy dissipation and mean square deviate of temperature. The third equation was incorporated in this model due to the necessity of simulating uh, chemical uh, reactions, chemistry, which uh, have a strong dependence on temperature and that's why turbulence should be taken into account. Uh, particulate phase uh, modeling. Main principle was the following. A set of representative model particles uh, was distinguished um, and uh, each particle represented uh, a great amount of real particles uh, and uh, which were similar in size, composition and velocity and a close location. And so for each model uh, particle, the vector of variables was um, uh, assembled, uh, just uh, associated. Uh, and so particles uh, were always uh, simulated in 3D motion. And so the, just the interaction of liquid uh, droplets and gas, you can see here momentum equation and then uh, just the forces of the interaction. And uh, so these forces of interaction, what is important, they are dependent on the uh, other particles, the effect of the neighboring particles, and if the mixture is dense, uh, these terms still uh, work. And the energy equation accounting for non-equilibrium uh, evaporation models. And so the, this is, these are just details on the resistance. Yes, and turbulent mod, uh, the effect on turbulence on the particle motion is taken into account in this relative velocity, which is the difference between the velocity of particle and gas, but to the gas phase velocity, the term W is added, uh, which characterizes the stochastic pulsation of uh, uh, just velocity, and it's determined based on the uh, K and epsilon model for turbulence. Uh, this approach was developed by my co-author Valery Nikitin. And so just the resistance coefficients, uh, which work not for rarefied mixtures, but for all uh, the mixtures, even for the uh, dense uh, mixtures. 
because it has uh, the limiting just uh, Reynolds analogy formula and Carmen Kazeni formula for porous medium. And so oh, the interpolation within, within uh, just oh, the whole range of volume a fraction of uh, uh, particles. Yes, uh, so some coefficients are also adjusted to the uh, density of uh, particulate phase. Atomization of droplets is taken into account based on Weber criterion and um, so fluxes form particles. And uh, now I'll come to the results. Just a uh, shock wave entering the dispersed mixtures. So the droplet size and temperature uh, are shown here. And you see that, of course, mo only model droplets. Each droplet simulates uh, um, tens of thousands of real droplets. But nevertheless, you see uh, the whole um, field is covered with these droplets. And so initially, they are stochastically distributed, but uniformly. And so the color is temperature. All these droplets are cool. And so the shock wave enters from the left-hand side. And you can see that after the compression, the droplets become smaller. So here, all the spectrum, just uh, small droplets are shown. And their temperature increases. And so the shock wave then uh, on the right hand side propagates deeper into the system, into the mixture, and deeper. And then finally, uh, after the just uh, 0.36 milliseconds, some ignition, secondary ignition, takes part in the zone of heated droplets. And then uh, the detonation wave starts. And you can see that after uh, this wave is propagating at time uh, 0.449, it is propagating uh, following uh, the primary shock. And behind this wave, wave, we already cannot see any droplets. Everything is evaporated and reacted. Chemical reaction took place. And so this is, this is the typical scenario. And so this is uh, just the uh, pressure um, uh, profiles on entering the dispersed mixture. First of all, we can see that uh, the intensity of the shock wave decreases. But then, uh, uh, as it propagates inside the mixture, it is the axial uh, pressure profile. And then uh, you can see curve for just the peak See, this is the place where onset of detonation takes place. And uh, so the next, uh, in the uh, left-hand uh, part, lower picture, you see the scale is already uh, uh, different of pressure. And so their pressure increases the overdriven regime, and then it overtakes the leading shock. Pressure decreases, and self-sustaining detonation is propagating. So this is the scenario. And so uh, here are um, also some uh, uh, shock wave uh, velocity, um, just uh, uh, curves, which were obtained in uh, this shock tube, which is shown uh, below in the dispersed mixture. And here, uh, depending on the initial velocity of shock wave, we um, can, uh, for the reacting mixture, we can either uh, see the just, we always see the decrease of velocity, then the increase, and then it can either extinguish uh, or just uh, decrease to the self-sustaining detonation. And the right-hand side are the, just the Schlieren pictures of these successive waves which overtake each other, as I showed in the numerical simulation. Yes, and here uh, there should have been a video, a shock wave coming from below, uh, 
and uh, just the uh, reaction of the uh, droplets for different uh, droplet size and density but this video doesn't work uh, probably i have forgotten forgotten to add some uh, files as i was informed uh, or maybe it's some incompatibility of the uh, systems um, because I'm showing this video not for the first time. Nevertheless, I'll tell you that uh, depending on uh, here, a very interesting uh, effect is manif uh, manifesting that uh, ignition and onset of detonation takes place not uh, from the very beginning, but somewhere deeper in this uh, zone of uh, droplets. And so conclusions, uh, so in shockwave initiation of air dispersed mixtures, strong attenuation of shockwave takes place, then secondary explosion could bring to an overdriven detonation, which slows down to a self-sustaining mode. mode. And second, to initiate a self-sustaining detonation process, one needs to have a strong shock wave with velocity sometimes higher than uh, that of the self-sustaining regime. Just a moment. Something... Uh, oh. You see... In an old uh, film about the Second World War, uh, this effect was commented as "kiss kiss Zayela." <laughs> okay, and so part two, we'll discuss the convective combustion and DDT and deflagration to detonation transition in polydispersed fuel air mixture. So we have the energy, no shock wave now. You see this gray zone, it's the zone of dispersed mixture, and somewhere in the uh, ball-shaped volume we release the energy, and so the half of energy goes to the gas and the half to the particles. This is just uh, voluntary uh, uh, ignition um, strategy. And then uh, we'll see, so yes, this is ignition modeling, so and the energy release is uh, characterized by the energy input and by the time during which this input uh, is realized. And so, mm, so th these are some data for model validation for the detonation uh, mode. Here you can see mm, just the results by Gordon and McBride, by Regland and Nichols, by our paper and experiments. And you can see that, of course, our results better fit experiments that, than all other models. Well, this is natural, else I wouldn't have shown you this picture, you understand? And, uh, and this is for the, uh, that was for the fuel air mixture. And this is for the mixture with oxygen, pure oxygen. And here you can see that uh, uh, all the models uh, provide higher values than actual experiment. So the reason for this discrepancy is uh, the following, because uh, in combustion and pure oxygen, temperatures are higher and uh, radiation losses cannot be neglected, and all the models neglect these losses, so this is natural. And so here uh, it is also a simulation of uh, one injector uh, from this engine, uh, which is shown to the right-hand side. Uh, it has 192 injectors. Here on the left-hand side there was the simulation of one injector, Unfortunately, it also do doesn't work, uh, but uh, I'll tell you that uh, usually there are three stages of this jet. First, it is very small, then it cools the vicinity and becomes uh, larger, but then combustion begins and it again gets smaller. And so this is, uh, these are just the successive images 
when we ignite uh, in the left hand side. And so here you see there are mm, uh, model droplets and the green droplets, they are heated. So heated reacted products from the left hand side, they penetrate and heat and contribute to evaporation of the droplets. And so the combustion process is going uh, on. Then uh, at time 12 milliseconds, uh, the shock wave so is formed already. And behind this shock wave, uh, droplets are much smaller. Atomization takes place. And then uh, finally, the detonation wave is formed. The formation is very fast. And so, uh, the, uh, but uh, nevertheless, you see that times here are uh, several orders of magnitude uh, longer than uh, in shockwave initiation, which is natural. Uh, the convective combustion is a slower process. And so, these are, uh, this is the reaction intensity. You shouldn't be confused uh, about the thickness of the zone because here the reaction intensity is provided in logarithmic scale. And besides, it sh shows that the shock wave, the leading shock wave, in terms of reaction, is not uniform. So the, there are some wrinkles, the transverse waves. And these are, again, the average pressure diagrams in the central um, in the center we can see that uh, on ignition at first there's pressure increases then it somehow decreases and the shock wave is propagating and then somewhere behind the shock wave there is the peak uh, and detonation uh, wave which brings later to the formation of the, this strong detonation wave and so, actually, if we depict the uh, velocity of the reaction front then with, uh, versus time, then one can see that at first the velocity is very small, slow combustion takes place. Then, after some oscillations, uh, velocity increases and surpasses uh, the detonation velocity and then slows down and there comes some uh, uh, quasi steady, I should say, Chapman Ruger regime. And so here there are two uh, figures, A, uh, two curves, A and B, and the difference uh, on these curves are the ignition uh, time, because the energy is two joules, all the other parameters are the same, but A it is 100 microseconds the time for energy release and uh, b it's 50 microseconds so much faster and you can see that the so the different rate of energy release and you can see that it aff uh, affects uh, the predetonation time the predetonation time decreases when we increase the rate of energy release and here, uh, for the rate, uh, for the energy release, 100 microseconds, we change the ignition energy, and the result is natural on increasing ignition energy. The increase of ignition energy brings to the decrease of predetonation time. And, uh, okay, uh, so the effect of initial mixture temperature, the increase of temperature of mixture, also brings to the decrease of predetonation time. And so conclusions to this part, convective combustion in dispersed mixture could lead either to a galloping mode of combustion or to onset of detonation. Increase of mixture temperature, pressure, ignition energy, and decrease of ignition time promote uh, flame acceleration. And uh, just uh, the next, uh, the effect of polydispersed character and non-uniformity of mixture on flame accelerations. So you see uh, here mm, we have uh, the droplets of different size. Just A, it's a monodispersed mixture. B, uh, the mixture where mm, ma maximal di di diameter are 
uh, predominant. On, on the left hand side, this is the probability distribution function for different sizes of droplets. C, it's the domination of small droplets. D, just the medium diameter is uh, dominant and then uh, the decrease. E, it's vice versa, and F, it's the uniform distribution of droplets versus diameter in a definite range. So this uh, distribution function is uh, usually adopted when we have no information about distribution of droplets. And so you can see here that, uh, of course, uh, the fastest, uh, the shortest uh, predetonation time is for the case when we have the uh, domination of small droplets, uh, for the when um, big droplets dominate, then uh, the mm, process of onset of detonation goes slower. But what I should point out that curve A and curve F are very similar and provide the same uh, just uh, uh, predetonation uh, time. And so uh, this is ma a magnificent, in my opinion, result, because if we use this very complicated uh, technology, different uh, just polydispersed mixture with uniform distribution when we do not know exactly, and we obtain a result uh, which were uh, obtained uh, of the type of, uh, of results obtained by the founders of this multi-phase combustion theory, which didn't have powerful enough computers and uh, used uh, the mean diameter, the simplified uh, just uh, uh, model which has had uh, droplets or particles with uh, the same diameter I should mention Academician Levin, for example, in his works which were published 30 years before or even earlier. But what should we, uh, which conclusion should we come to? That the uh, previous works, they were uh, just very correct in terms of representing the polydispersed mixture with the uniform distribution of droplets versus uh, diameter in a definite range. And so here, uh, uh, the effect of condensed phase distribution spatial non-uniformity. You can see here the upper uniform, uh, non-uniform in R axis, uh, just uh, in the center less or in the center uh, more droplets and then non-uniformity in x-axis. Rarefied mixture then more dense than vice versa. And so for all these mixtures we have here mm, the results which uh, just for the uniform mixture and some uh, non-uniform, uh, and uh, we can see here that uh, just uh, predetonation time and predetonation length here uh, decreases, uh, and here it is, um, yes, uh, you can see that uh, predetonation time uh, increases, but as for predetonation length, it is. It practically doesn't change, which is also magnificent. So the process needs longer time to develop, but uh, it, the onset of detonation takes place in the same uh, time. So some mm, uh, non-uniformity in R axis also manifests uh, such uh, uh, the same. Um, yes, and here uh, we can also see that. Um, this just just a moment yes this uh, non-uniformity uh, which we see and the big concentration in the beginning in the zone of ignition 
it uh, brings to the increase of predetonation time, but predetonation length is uh, the same. But uh, all these simulations, well, these are conclusions uh, that uh, polydispersed mixtures with prevailing small fraction creates more favorable condition for flame acceleration, and uh, which I wanted in to discuss uh, the aspects in part four, the main problems which we encounter in the simulation. First, multi-scale character of processes making a different performing simulation even using adaptive uh, grids. And stiffness and high dimensionality of the system of differential equations for chemical kinetics. And the solution of this system can take 80% of pr processor time uh, just as compared to the overall uh, um, uh, hydrodynamics and turbulence and everything. The most. And so, uh, what is the solution? The solution uh, was announced long before. So, we use parallel computing. The, we uh, make some segmentation of the domain and compute uh, in parallel. This, uh, and so, but the parallel computing, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, the parallel computing uh, is also limited by the Jean Amdahl law, uh, which uh, says that actually in each code there is some uh, uh, there are some places which cannot be performed parallel that should be performed successively, and so this is uh, um, alpha, for example, the part of this, and uh, the other part one minus alpha. It can be parallelized, and so the time of its implementation should be divided over the p. The p is the number of parallel processes. And so then one can see this acceleration. And you can see here from his formula that even if p is tending to infinity, the acceleration is 1 over alpha. So it's limited. But we uh, modified this Abdam Amdahl's law and took into account the time of the data transmission from different parts of different processes or processors because there needs it's very small this time is very small but taking it into account we can see that this acceleration you see on the curve two this. Um, it reaches maximum and then on increasing number of processes is going down. So it's not a proper solution for these multi-scale chemical reactive, chemically reactive problems. And so then there is another uh, solution which we are now trying. So the neural network approach to modeling chemistry here, there is a title of the paper and uh, just, uh, uh, well, it's uh, the motor is Elena Viktor and Mikhailchen. Can you see this? she's also present here? And so this is uh, their attempt uh, to use neural network instead of uh, solving the uh, differential equations for chemistry. Well, attempt is good, but somewhere the divergence of curves is. And so another uh, scientist, well, um, from our institute, uh, suggested the architect architecture uh, using one level or two level architecture of the network, uh, with the uh, adding to the loss function the prediction for ten steps ahead, and you see the results turned to be much better. That is, Yakov uh, Karandashev. 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 Okay. And uh, so I hope that uh, with the help of my colleagues, young colleagues, uh, will be successful in solving this problem of uh, just simulations. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Snorov. So we have a little bit of time for questions, so please.
Yes, please. Uh, Nikolai Nikolaevich, uh, thank you very much for a very interesting lecture. Mm, my question is, mm, uh, um, there are actually two processes, combustion and detonation. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, can you bit comment about relation uh, between uh, them, uh, especially in the uh, view of the processes you have considered? Oh, thank you. It's a very good uh, question, and I just missed it in the, my presentation. Actually, chemically, these are the same uh, processes. It's just the uh, um, chemical transformations with the energy release, with exothermic reaction. But what is the difference? The main difference is in the mechanism of the propagation of this flame. For combustion, as I said, or normal flame, the mechanism of the propagation is heating of the successive layers of the mixture by the, due to thermal conductivity by, uh, from the burnt uh, uh, gases, reactive gases. And detonation has absolutely different mechanism it is a strong shock wave, compression of the medium in a shock wave, which causes chemical reaction. And due to this re reason, combustion process uh, propagates with a subsonic speed and detonation with the supersonic. And so that is the reason it was named detonation, because French uh, scientists who were studying combustion they detected false combustion and named it detonation, detonation from the French verb detonner, uh, which is a musical term. So be out of musical tone, detonner. And that's why detonation. So this. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So we also have questions from online participants. Dmitry Anatolyevich, uh, last вопрос. We can't hear you. I am sorry. Excuse me. It was wonderful as usually, Nikolai. It was wonderful. Ah, thank you. My thank question you. will be, yes, thank you. My question will be so. Maybe forty and fifty years ago it was a very interesting problem, as you know, of course, about the damping shock wave in dispersion medium. Mm -hmm. It was a big problem and many academicians study this problem. And one of the questions will so, if we have the size of droplet with partial frequency, so we equal for time of shock wave, the damping is maximum. I did not see in your equation the phenomenon and the effect of is changing of size of your droplet. Maybe I did not see it, my mistake, I'm sorry. What do you think about this? Well, actually, the size of droplets uh, uh, is essential uh, on uh, attenuation of shock wave on entering dispersed uh, mixture. And so, but uh, here, since it was not uh, the main problem to study, it was studied before, I used uh, the polydispersed mixture, so droplets of different sizes, and uh, just there in the pressure diagrams, it is seen that attenuation takes place. So the pressure behind the shock wave decreases until the ignition starts. So this is uh, coherent to what was um, understood before. Uh, but, uh, well, actually, it was not uh, the main goal. But it is present here s somewhere in the, just in the results. I'm see, I'm sorry, of course, thank you, but the added mass which you uh, took, it was constant for you. Added and in the real situation, it uh, may be changing the frequency. Uh, you mean the added mass uh, force. Uh, actually, in this, um, in this simulation, since we do not have oscillations with some frequency, we have a strong uh, just discontinuity a shock wave. So here the effect of added mass uh, 
is not uh, as uh, valuable as the effects of uh, drag, atomization, and so on, because uh, the air and um, droplets, their density difference is uh, three orders of magnitude. On the other hand, I didn't show here uh, in our simulations with bubble flows, when uh, the bubbles, there the added mass plays the main role and all other forces, all drag forces can be uh, neglected. The added mass is uh, the major um, effect because there when bubble we have and the carrying phase is fluid, then uh, it's also three orders of magnitude difference in density, uh, but in favor of added mass. But here these results were not present. Thank you very much, I understand. It was very interesting. Much thanks. So, colleagues, uh, I see that we'll yes. still have some more questions, but unfortunately we are running out of time. So let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.